Look at the hill. Hang on a minute, what is that? I thought it was a baby octopus to start off with, some sort of starfish. Never seen a starfish moving like that before. Weird. Welcome back, we're back on the scallops again. These are decent sized scallops. Really nice, really clean. I haven't got many, but let's see how many I can get. I'll be happy with three dozen. I think the scallops are gonna have to wait. I'm gonna follow this. There's a cuttlefish on a hunt here. You can tell it's hunting just the way it's very stealthy. Its tentacles are tucked into almost like a triangle. So basically on the inside they've got a, t a large feeding tentacle that's like a, a flattened sort of paddle shaped um, tip on it and it's so fast. These coral fish don't seem to be affected by divers or people. Um, they just get on with what they're doing. Let's follow it. Oh look the two top ones are up now. It means it's getting ready to strike. Let's see if we can follow it and see if it catches anything. Check out the coloration on its back and the way it, it's little fin on the sides moving. Not quite sure what these little blue dots are on the back of it. I'm sure they're just decorative. I tell you the one thing I find out freaky with these things. They got you look at their eye up close. It's like a W. It's the most weirdest eye I think I've ever seen. I think I'm getting the best of both worlds here because it's leading me to scallops. It's another one. Quickly slide that in the bag. Let's follow it. Where's it gone? Ah, there it is.
One thing I can't understand is how these things know how to do stuff, knowing that they only live between 14 and 18 months. Basically, they, they're they born, they go out, they hunt, they feed, they find a mate, and when the both mates have done what they have to do, both of them die. This is why you see loads of them cottle bones on the beaches, the ones that people like sort of collect for their parrots. <laughs> I can see another scallop just here on the bottom left. I'll grab it without startling it. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems to be leading me to scallops. It, it waited as I picked that one up, and it's waited right next to that one. Oh, I think it's seen something, it's changed colour. Oh no, I think I just missed it, I think I just missed it attacking something, yep, I think I did, I think it's eating something now, ah! Don't want to get too carried away, I better check my computer and check my air. Ah, 195 bar, that's loads of air left. So let's carry on. Found this big chunky piece of glass, really thick. Maybe from a port hole of a boat or something. And also these old pots. See, these have probably been dumped at sea. Maybe not so much off of a, a boat, but someone's probably had a load of old terracotta pots that used to grow tomatoes in. And what they've done is just come out to sea. Ah, I think I know what this is. I see this on uh, Smash Fishing's channel. It's a lobster. The lobster's pushed all this out. He's sort of burrowed it and made himself, himself a little den in there. Look, there he is. Probably freshly malted. The shell looks really nice and clean. So he's probably hiding in there. He's malted, um, or she has malted and eaten the shell. And now they're just waiting for it to stiffen up before they can come back out. Probably under the cover of darkness. Hermit crab on top of the scallop. They're funny, them little things. So funny to watch, especially when they fight with others. Now we seem to be on a decent bed of scallops here. I mean, it's not amazing, but I'm getting, starting to get a few. Check out that visibility. It's amazing when the vis is like this. It can be quite dangerous, to be honest, because uh, sometimes you get carried away with your time because you spend a lot of time looking around. The whole of this area is quite full, to be honest, of big starfish, big fat starfish. I think there's a lot of clams below these mill beds. Another hermit crab. Turn the lights on. Where's he gone? Uh, he's done a runner. Having a look under all these rocks, just to see if there's anything under there. Maybe another burrow for a, a lobster or maybe a crayfish or something like that. It's the 
crab pot. I've seen this crab pot on the last dive. It's quite ornate this crab pot, it's got a lot of coral growing all over it. It's been down here for a while. Another big, big starfish here. This one's uh, very thin. Check it out, it's moving along. They can actually move it pretty quick, these things, compared to my hand. It's got to be probably 12 inches across this thing. Check it out how fast it's moving. It's no limb for Christy, but it's still pretty quick. He's a scallop. Not quite sure if a scallops can actually smell these starfish coming or maybe feel them or hear them, I don't know. Probably see them with their 200 eyes. But you see, they get out their burrows where they are. Well, not so much burrows, but they get out the, the sand where they are and they try swimming off. See, this one's done exactly the same. Just sitting there on the surface. Problem is, it's facing the wrong way. To be able to see for the uh, starfish is still after it. Its eyes are on the front, not the back. Tide today is not too bad. We're diving in almost slack water. You can see this backscatter, these little white bits in the water are uh, almost stationary when I stop. When I swim into them, obviously they're moving, or I'm moving through them, I should say. Look at this undulation of the seabed with all this, um, these mill beds. Pretty cool. There is loads and loads of cockle shells all over the bottom, or some sort of clam shells, I should say. Take a closer look at this mural. It's like a purpley pink hard seaweed. It's like a spiky underwater carpet. Let's turn the lights on so you can see the proper colour. It's like a coralline algae. Um, deposits of lime, sort of all together. It's like a brittle skeleton in a way. These beds should be protected, really. Should be some sort of protection order on these things. Really nice. You can see the sort of deposits of them when you go down on uh, Bank Inbert on the right hand side. There's some dead ones up on the beach. It's like a little coral, like a coral sand. But these are really important for our um, marine environment and they should be protected, really. It's just a shame they decided to put our new sewer pipe straight through the middle of it. But then again, People probably don't know that. The seabed, when you're up close to it in real life, is absolutely beautiful. The colours of it. The camera doesn't do it justice. These mill beds, they normally grow in channels where there's loads of uh, tide running through it, loads of current. There's definitely loads of current through here. This is in a, uh, a almost like a bottleneck between the islands of Herm and Guernsey, so the tide comes through this the little rustle fairly quickly. You're talking plus three knots of tide at some some states of tide.
So I've probably got a few now. Notice, as always, I'm leaving the smaller ones, the ones that are even close to look like they're being undersized. I'm just leaving them for now. There has to be a, a stock of scallops here to replenish itself. Cool, look at that. Really old bottle. I think there's a fish living in it, so I'm not going to touch it. Again, I'm looking under the rocks to see if I can find any burrows. It's a bit of kelp. Quite shallow here, at 20 metres. It's quite hard to tell where you're going or where you're navigating to. Um, especially when you're diving, unless you're looking at your compass all the time. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to um, figure out which way the tide's going, if there is any tide. And I tend to swim at 45 degree angles to the tide. Some more bottles here. Probably fish living in them. So I'll even be. So yeah, I swim in 45 degrees to the tide and I sort of kind of do a figure of eight across the tide with the um, uh, the tide coming ac across the side of the figure of eight. So, you, so I tend to notice I see things on the way back that I've seen on the way out. That's not to say I don't notice any scallops on the way back either. So now I can tell, oh look at this yellow one, this is pretty cool. They normally come in bl uh, pale blue these um, spiny starfish but you do get them in different colours. So that's more like a, a sort of magnolia coloured one. Pretty cool. So yeah now I've sort of come too far to the north now I can tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, check my air. I'm still good. I've still got about 20 bar left before I'm going to start leaving the bottom. So I want to leave my half tank for the next dive. So I've come off the mill beds now really and we're onto a, a harder rocky ground. Another one, that's pretty cool. It's another different colour one. Now this one is actually eating. Underneath it there's a clam, that's why it's raised in the middle. Basically they they engulf over the top of them, they sniff them out, they find them, they get on top of them. they got hundreds of little smaller legs underneath. And although they're not strong singularly, when they're in a big combination of 50 or 60, can quite easily prise open the shells of these clams and get inside some nice rust coral. I like the orange rust co coral. See this kind of made me f look at it twice. I was trying to figure out what it was. It looked like a, a fillet off a flatfish that had been killed over but it's not. It's actually the outside of a um, an edible uh, sea urchin. It's obviously dead and smashed into sections now unfortunately but that's what it was. These bottles with the neck set down into the sand, it's quite a modern uh, champagne bottle. You can tell by the push up in the bottom and the fact that there's little um, little divoty bits on the bottom. So although it's trash, I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to do it so the neck's out. So it can, could be a little hatchery for a uh, tompot blenny or another fish that wants to use it. There's a few more scallops here. Some of them are too small though. some of these clams I was chatting about it's also a bottle there eh? let's have a look at that bottle is it old? a ah, pretty cool bottle nah not old it's got dimples on the bottom so that's probably like 50s onwards they put the little dimples on to reduce friction when it's on the conveyor belt 
Give it a little bit of grip, but not too much grip. It's also got some numbers on the bottom, which would have been its mould number. To do with their quality assurance, I'm sure. So, we're going back over old ground now. I can tell this is old ground, because I recognise some of it. Albeit, there is still more, more scallops here, because uh, depending on which direction you're looking in, I find sometimes you miss some of the scallops. So yeah, here's one here I must have missed first time round. This is a prime example of a scallop that's been eaten by a starfish. There'd be a very small hole which they've drilled in it to, to get into it and they've prized it open. It's definitely not a diver because both sides are together, they're still fixed. Look at this, it's one of these old pots. So we're definitely back to where we were before. Ha, huh, that's pretty cool, look. It's made a sandcastle. I'm going to put it back on top. Sun must have gone in through the little hole in the top. There's some more scallops here. I can sense them. Oh, I didn't sense that. It's another cuttlefish. Is it the same cuttlefish? Possibly. Looks a little bit smaller. Oh, I love the camo. And that's it. Disappeared again. I need just about work it out. I really do love these things. That's something you don't see too often. Apart from it actually just staying still um, and closing its mouth. This is the other defence mechanism the scallop's got. If it senses it's in immediate danger from a starfish or something like that, what it would do is it would try and swim off. It's a good example there of it swimming. It must have sensed me as a danger and started swimming off. covered quite a bit of ground this probably went maybe six foot I suppose but that six foot could be the, the difference between actually getting eaten by a starfish or getting away and living another day oh, I picked that up I thought it was a small cannonball but it's not another another scallop I really must be getting close to the end of my uh, end of my air allocation for this dive now. Normally head up at 120. Ah, see, this proves that I've actually come back the same way because this is that large starfish. Hasn't moved that far, maybe six, seven hundred mil. Anyway, we're going to carry on over the top of this reef. Go and have a look on the top of the reef now. See if we can see anything else. This is my last one and I'm heading up. Did I do okay? Hmm, 30 odd. It's not too bad. I think Rich should be happy with that. There's the boat, it's not too far away. Just wait here for him to come to me. <laughs> Lift bags come up, that can only mean one thing. Get this ready for Richard. 
Well, it can mean a few things. Do we think it is another piece? <laughs> it's more iron junk. Yeah. And that was Matt, I take it. Yeah. <sighs> All right, sort my scallops out before the boys get back on board. Bad, really. Uh, you're going back. Some nice beasts. That is a nice beast. Let's go engaged. Yeah, that's up. That's 52 for me. Down on the Richards Way, otherwise, you can't see Matt coming aboard. Yeah, I've got it. Had it. Until the handle hit the gun up. You wouldn't believe where that was. What happened there, Matt? No, it's right next to the anchor. Five. Literally. Yeah, it's only a four score. Bitter when it's on the northeast. There's a load of seagulls here. I won't tell you why the seagulls are there. Probably the same reason the scallops are so big up here. And now we're heading with the wind, it's lovely. Not even getting wet. Heading back in now. It's actually a really nice day. Visibility was amazing.
Richard shopping all these scallops. Richard, what's the um, the orange bit on them? Right. I'll make a mess of this one, of course. <laughs> Put a camera on anybody and they'll make a mess. So, that's the mussel. That's the eggs. That's the sperm. And their scallops are asexual. So they've got sperm and eggs, but they can't self fertilize. But they all spawn together. We've actually been diving and they're all puffing. And it's normally after about four or five days of fine hot weather, just a sudden rise in temperature. And they all spawn at the same time. This is the liver, and that's what um, the birds love. And, you know, the, for some reason, you know, we get little stone, uh, turnstones down here, and they absolutely love the liver. And the seagulls much prefer the liver to the frills. And what's the, the brown bit on the other side here? Is that the kidney? I don't know. I'm not an expert. After shocking two million, <laughs> I still don't really know too much about them. That's they interesting. Taste nice. So and, uh, I might be having some tonight. <laughs> so the orange are female, the white's the male part. Yeah. They don't fertilise themselves to stop inbreeding, I'm guessing. Yeah, well that's, that's the basic rules as far as I know. But, you know, I don't know too much after 55 years. No, I'm glad I've uh, figured out what that is now. I've always just known it as the row. But, okay, cheers for that. Okay, lucky. To be honest, I'm kind of glad we're back in now. It's pretty, uh, pretty cold wind coming straight into the face. It's now time we went to the. Uh, it's now time we went to the cafe. It's coffee time. Thanks a lot for coming along, and I'll catch you on the next tide.